Hi there, and welcome back um, to The Doc Is In. Uh, this is my third episode of doing this, so it's pretty getting pretty um, for me. Um, I'm trying to get a lot of issues out of the way so that I can get into just, like some of the more current stuff, but anyway, um, this episode is I Am A Scared Kid. Um, growing up, I was always a pudgy kid. I was, you know, pudgy, husky, overweight, chubby, fat, whatever you want to use. I mean, in the South, there are so many words to say a kid is overweight. But anyway, so I grew up um, always really unsure of myself. I, I, I was, again, I was a, a bright kid, but I just never had, I guess, the confidence that some had. I wasn't a sports kid. I was more of a reading, writing um, dramatic arts, theater, all that stuff. That's what I was into. I was into things that most kids weren't. So I was always kind of a scared kid. I never, um, I, I made friends fairly easily, but I think that because I was not a fighter, I was not a, um, bully or any of that stuff. And because I wasn't, I felt like sometimes I got bullied, if you will. Um, and I use that term loosely because, if I, if I'm like, you know, as an adult looking back, um, it's kind of like, yeah, there was like one kid that I can remember, um, who would bully like everybody. And I, I think that was, you know, it's, it's weird. Let me, let me just pause and, and back up a sec. So, you know, I'm from a very small rural Louisiana town and there were people who were like, bullies but then there were people who were like more so just like the galley so um you have people who would make snide remarks or silly comments or try and like crack on you but I was always again I'm a smart kid I mean you come at me verbally I got you always uh so um verbal cracks did never bother me um none of that really was an issue but here's the catch like, I remember one kid who used to be so physical, just, like, always wanting to push, shove, punch, whatever. And I, if I remember his name right, his name was Skyler. A uh, white kid, also doughy, so I don't understand at the time why he felt the need to bully anybody. But, you know, in hindsight and looking at him as a kid, it's like, sorry to say this like this, but this kid was dumb as a box of rocks. And it was pretty clear even then that he wasn't going to amount to much. So he bullied anybody who basically could have cared less about his existence. And I didn't then. And to be honest, like one time I think I went home and he was like sitting on a porch, just letting the letting life pass him by, I guess. I don't know. But the thing about it is, and I think he's been in jail too, but that's again, neither here nor there. Um, so you know, back then, I think me as a kid, I was really scared of a lot of things. And it it did feel to some extent kind of hopeless because it's like when you're being teased, even if it's just verbal uh, teasing, it, it gets to be a lot after a while. And um, I remember like there were all like there were a lot of kids, uh, especially like once I got to like middle and high school. Don't get me wrong. Again, I was on teams and I did all this other stuff, but I was still like two or three times bigger than any anybody else there. And I just always remember the murmurs, the jokes, and that kind of thing. Now, as an adult, it just really doesn't bother me so much because in hindsight, I realized that to some extent, I used all of that as motivation to say, I'm going to be better than these people. I'm going to be better than that. And when I say better, I don't mean better socioeconomically. I mean better in terms of how I treat others. I'm going to do my best to be better. Um, during that time, during throughout all of this, there were some people who were just so kind, man. Like, you know, looking back, there's a guy uh, from my hometown. His name is Carlton. Everybody called him Carl T. I don't know why. I never, under, I never understood why they did that. But anyway, he's just like, is like I, I think he's a pastor today. But I have to say, this guy was just like the pinnacle of what it meant to be a kind 
human being. He was a just a decent, kind human being. He was not the type to, you know, make fun of anybody. He wasn't the type to get into the things that most kids our age at that time would have gotten into. Um, again, considering it's a small town, there's not a lot to get into other than what alcohol or drugs. And I mean, he just was not that type of guy. Um, so actually, more recently, when I heard that he became a minister, it was like totally understood. He, you know, if there were any, if there was anyone that I would say, while wow, you've lived a life that is exemplary in that way, he gets that. He gets that award. Also, Tedrick. Uh, there's a guy, Tedrick. Tedrick uh, was the same way, and actually, he too became a pastor. Um, again, good guys, man. Just real, honest, genuine, humble. Um, caring people. And so shout outs to Carlton and Tedrick, you know, great job guys. I, I mean, I wish those guys nothing but the best in, in their ministries because, you know, the world needs more kind, caring, humble people who can hopefully foster that in others. Um, so as I talk about that, you know, just the, the concept of being a scared kid, I now see, you know, as my nephews, my nieces, my littles, as I call them, as they're growing up, I see how mean and callous the world can be. And the one thing that I want to encourage everybody to do is be a light, man. Be a light in a dark place because, you know, the way politics go, the way everything happens in this world, we really need some folks who are okay with just being a light. And my uh, my pastor, Pastor Ralph Douglas West, Church Without Walls, um, one thing I love that he said is, uh, I think he quoted his mom, and he said, like, sometimes it's just nice to be nice. And that's true. Like, it doesn't hurt anybody to do one nice thing for somebody. I encourage everybody, do one nice thing for a stranger. Don't look for anything in return. Just do it. You'd be amazed if everybody did one nice thing and passed it on. We would live in the most amazing world. But instead, we follow the lead of con artists and, and, and charlatans and people who just seek to divide us instead of finding the things that we all have in common. I encourage everybody who watched this, just today, tomorrow, as soon as you can, do something nice for somebody else. Don't make it something you broadcast. Just do something nice just because. And just watch how the world in your sphere will change as a result of the positivity that you put out. Never, never doubt the power of positivity and of just an honest and good heart. All right. Um, thank you all for sitting through this with me. Um, I know some of it was rambling. Forgive me. Um, but uh, thank you for being here. I love you guys. And I'm going to say love yourself and love somebody else today because we'll all be better for it. Have a good one.